Let's talk about partial diploids. This is important because sometimes what we can have a bacterial cell that has two molecules of DNA. So if this is our bacterial cell, we might have DNA from a plasmid, which was inserted into the bacterial cell through recombinant technology. And then we'll also have DNA from the bacteria's genome or bacterial chromosome. And both of these molecules of DNA might consist of the LAC-I gene. So both of them have the LAC-I gene sequence, and they might also both have the LAC operon. So this kind of cell ha that has two copies of the LAC-I gene and two copies of the LAC operon will be called a partial diploid. So a partial diploid is a cell with two copies of the LAC operon and two copies of the LAC-I gene. One key idea to note is that the LAC I gene is also known as a transacting element. And what that means is that a trans element can move through the cytoplasm in order to do its function. So in this case, the LAC I gene can move through the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell in order to produce the repressor protein. Now let's do some examples of haplotypes. So haplotypes are alleles of the partial diploid cell. O plus means you have a wild type operator. OC is gonna mean our operator is mutated. So our repressor cannot bind to the operator. I plus means a wild type repressor is produced. And I minus means a mutated repressor is produced. And so if we have a chromosomal bacterial cell with the haplotype I plus, O plus, and Z plus, and we want to determine whether beta gal is produced with and without lactose, let's look at these two scenarios. So with lactose and without lactose. First of all, let's look at this haplotype. So I plus means that we have a functional repressor produced. And O plus is gonna mean we have a functional operator, which means that our repressor can bind to the operator. And Z plus is referring to a functional LAC-Z gene, which means beta galactosidase can be produced. Now, if we look at our DNA sequence with lactose, a repressor protein will be produced from our LAC-I gene because we have an I plus haplotype. But because we have the presence of lactose, allolactose is going to bind to our repressor protein. This will change the shape of the protein so that it cannot bind to the operator. This means that RNA polymerase will bind to our promoter and it will be able to transcribe the three genes because it's not being blocked by the repressor protein. As a result, beta galactosidase will be produced. But what about without lactose? Well, without lactose, our repressor protein is still produced because we do have a functional I plus gene. We don't have lactose, which means that the repressor protein will be able to bind to the operator because there's nothing that changes its shape. When RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, it's blocked by the repressor protein, so it cannot transcribe, which means that beta-galactosidase is not produced. So let's also look at another example. If our bacterial chromosome has the haplotype I plus OC, and Z plus, and we have a plasmid with the haplotype I plus, O plus, Z minus, and both of these are located in our bacterial cell, 
And we ask the question, is beta-galactosidase produced with and without lactose? How can we determine whether beta-galactosidase is produced? Well, let's first look at our bacterial chromosome. So we know I plus means that a repressor is produced. OC means that we have a mutated operator, so our repressor will not be able to bind to the operator. And Z plus means that we have a functional lack Z gene. So if everything else works, we should produce beta-galactosidase. But let's look at these two scenarios. So with lactose, our DNA sequence looks like this. And we're going to produce a repressor protein because our lac I gene is functional. Now, in the presence of lactose, the molecule allolactose is going to bind to our repressor protein. And it's going to change the shape of our repressor protein so that our protein cannot bind to our operator. But let's also take note of the fact that our operator is mutated. It has the haplotype OC. So our mutated operator would not be able to have a repressor bound to it anyways. This means that our repressor will not bind to the operator. RNA polymerase will bind to the promoter and it will be able to transcribe the three genes and beta-galactosidase will be produced. Now, without lactose, we have our lac operon, and our lac operon is going to produce our repressor protein. And without lactose, it should be able to bind to the operator. But again, it cannot because the operator is mutated. This means that RNA polymerase will still be able to bind to the promoter, but it, it'll be able to transcribe all three genes because there's nothing blocking it. The repressor protein was unable to bind to the operator. So RNA polymerase is free to transcribe and beta-galactosidase will be produced. Let's now look at the haplotype of the plasmid. So I plus, O plus, and Z minus. I plus means that a repressor is produced. O plus means we have a functional operator, so it's not mutated it will be able to have a repressor bound to it. And Z minus means we have a non-functional or a mutated lack Z gene. So with lactose, we'll have a lac operon that'll produce a repressor protein. And in the presence of lactose, Allolactose will bind to the repressor protein and change its shape so that it should not be able to bind to the operator. So here I've drawn an arrow to the operator, but the repressor should not bind to the operator. LAC-Z is mutated, it's non-functional, which means beta-galactosidase will not be produced. Similarly, Without lactose, our lac operon is going to produce a repressor protein. And this time the repressor protein will be able to bind to the operator. But again, because lac Z is mutated since it was Z minus, we will not produce beta-galactosidase. Remember that LAC-Z is the gene that's responsible of producing beta-galactosidase. So if it's mutated, then we're not going to produce beta-galactosidase. So if you look at the haplotype for the plasmid, you notice that we it says Z minus. And so whenever you see a minus next to the Z, Remember that regardless of whether the repressor or the operator is mutated or functional, beta-galactosidase will not be produced. Overall, we can see that in this cell, in this bacterial cell, 
beta-galactosidase will be produced with and without lactose.